When I first started building bike frames as a hobby, one of the biggest hurdles to overcome was how to hold the tubes so I could tack them together. A professional jig has never been on the budget, so that meant I had to go the DIY route. In this video, I'll show you the first version of my jig, how it's changed over the last 13 years, I'll briefly go over how I use it, all the parts needed to build a similar jig, some future revisions I'm planning, and I'll do a rough estimate of the cost if I were to build it all over again today. Being a hobby builder with limited space and money, I needed a jig that would be small, simple, easy to move around, and not require a lot of hardware to build. Also, I don't have a way to machine jig parts, so everything's got to be off the shelf. When I started looking at different types of frame jigs online, a beam style jig made from 8020 met all my requirements. And this is the first version of my jig back in 2012. The beam style jig isn't that common, but there are a few frame builders using it, including Black Sheep. A simple beam jig also works well with my process since I build the frame in a series of sub assemblies instead of tacking the whole frame all at once. My version doesn't hold all the tubes in place like a professional jig would, but I've been able to work around that. The stand for the jig is homemade and was one of a couple different projects I did for practice when I first started brazing. The jig is made mostly of 10 series 8020 extruded aluminum and hardware. 8020 is extremely adjustable, relatively straight, and widely used for jigs and fixtures. After getting the 8020, the next thing I needed were attachment points for the tubes and dropouts. These were the hardest things for me to source back when I first built the jig. For the head tube and bottom bracket shell, I started out using tapered purge washers from Paragon Machine Works. It looks like they don't make the smaller sizes anymore, but they still do offer a 2 inch washer that'll fit T47 bottom brackets and 44 millimeter head tubes. There are also a few products out there that could be repurposed as cones or pucks depending on the tube diameters you're using, including an aluminum 45 adapter for a turntable or using the pucks from a couple cheap bearing presses. I eventually upgraded to a pair of 1 and 1 8 head tube cones from Alex Mead. The cones also work nicely for standard bottom bracket shells and the top of a seat tube. Then I upgraded to a cone, puck, and dummy axle holder that a machinist made for me. My current setup uses a cone and puck for the head tube, a puck and a Paragon tapered washer for the bottom bracket shell, and one of the Alex Mead cones for the top of the seat tube. The next thing to figure out was how to attach the cones to the 8020. The simplest way was to just use 8020 brackets, but the brackets are meant for one quarter inch bolts, which were too small for the half inch hole in the cones. So to use larger bolts, I drilled out the bracket hole so it just fit a 5 16th bolt. For the seat tube cone, a 5 16th flat head bolt has a large enough head for the half inch hole in the cone, and the taper nicely centers the cone onto the bolt. For the head tube and bottom bracket shell where I wanted to use threaded rod, I found some 5 16th anti theft nuts that have a cone section. The part with the flats is meant to shear off as the nut is tightened down, leaving a threaded cone. I just broke the nut off, spun the little cone down the threaded rod, and held it in place with another nut. My original dummy axle was just a piece of 3 8 inch threaded rod held in the groove of a chunk of 8020 by hose clamps. I then realized the nuts of the 3 8 rod fit nicely in the center of a piece of 10 series 8020, so I didn't need to use the hose clamps anymore. Then I upgraded to actual dummy axles. 
I tried securing the axles to the 8020 a few different ways over the years, but then I got the machined dummy axle holder, which made things much stiffer and neater. And here's my current jig setup. Like I mentioned earlier, I built my frames in a series of sub-assemblies. They get tacked in the jig, then brazed in the park stand. The first step is to set up the jig based on the numbers from BikeCAD. A few years ago, I added adhesive measuring tape to the jig, which makes setup quite a bit quicker and easier. Then I set up the seat tube and bottom bracket shell horizontally on the main beam and tack them together. Then I tack the down tube and the head tube, and when those two sub-assemblies are tinned, I tack those two together. The jig doesn't have a permanent way to hold the seat tube at the correct angle yet, so I just rig something up every time. Then the top tube gets held with a couple cobra clamps while it gets tacked in place. I also don't have a permanent way to hold a yoke in place. I've tried a few different methods using 8020, and most recently I use my wizard dummy tire tool which worked pretty well. Once the yoke is attached, I mount the dummy axle and dropouts in the jig, and the chain stays just fit between the two. The most recent upgrade I made to the jig was a dummy crank to check chain stay clearance for the crank arm and chain ring. The last step is to rig up a fixture to tack the seat stay yoke in place and fit the seat stays between the yoke and the dropouts. Here's the list of all the jig parts, along with the 8020 part numbers. There is one exception. I couldn't find these six whole horizontal brackets on Amazon. They're probably available somewhere, but they don't really need to be six whole brackets. So I just ended up adding two more four hole brackets to the list. I also have some extra extrusion and brackets on the jig. It's nice to have some extra parts around for random fixtures, which I've done a few of over the years. The parts list includes everything needed to make what's pictured here, minus the dummy crank. I do have some upgrades planned for the jig, including replacing the main beams with larger 2 inch by 4 inch 8020 extrusions, which will hopefully make the jig a bit stiffer. I use these 2x4 aluminum beams when I do a cost estimate later in this video. I'll also be adding metric only measuring tapes when I replace the main beams. <laughs> 
For the cost estimate, I just used Amazon. You can also buy it direct from 8020, and there seems to be a good selection on eBay too. But Amazon was just the easiest to find everything. 8020 isn't that expensive, but the shipping costs are kind of crazy. For the estimate, I include shipping costs, but I didn't include tax. So here are all the parts with their shipped prices. While $1,100 to $1,400 isn't exactly cheap, I think I ended up with a more reliable, usable, and durable jig than some of the really low-cost options out there. At the same time, this is for a hobbyist, not a professional, and you get what you pay for. While that amount of cash is a pretty big investment for me, it was spread over several years. And with every bike I build, that investment pays off. Even if I were to build the jig in its current form all at once with today's prices, it would still be worth it, because it allows me to build my own bikes. If you're interested in seeing how I build my bikes, be sure and check out the rest of my channel. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.